Hello friends and welcome back to another video on Study to Rant's YouTube channel. In the React series up until now we have covered a lot of things. We have worked with states. We have seen how we can have an array as a state variable. How we can update. How we can you know add and remove values from it. In this particular video we will take a step further. Yes, in this video we will learn how we can you know handle form values and how we can handle form data if you want to create any form in your web application that you're creating with react.js and how you can process the form data and i will cover the most easiest most simplest way to handle a form you'll just have to write four or five lines of code and you'll be able to capture all the values that are there or that will be in your particular form whatever form you're creating so let's get started so if you can see on the screen, I have already created a simple sign up form. In my sign up form, I have a name field, an email field, a gender select uh, field. Then we have used a radio button. We have a checkbox. So all sort of input fields I have used. Uh, there's a text field, email field, a select a radio button. Then we have a checkbox and a submit button. Now the user interface is created just like you know we used to create this in HTML. JSX is almost similar to HTML. So as you can see over here, we have a heading for the sign up form text and I've created a form. I've added a simple class card that I've been using in the previous videos as well, just to have you know this small outline, basic UI stuff. Then we have a div inside of this, we have a label name, we have an input field type text name name. We have not added any value. We can add a placeholder though, if you want. Uh, enter name. So you'll get a placeholder over here, right? So we can do that. In this, we have type email. Name is also email. We can add a placeholder here as well. Enter email. Yep. Then we have a select field which has name gender. I've given this uh, name to every of the field, although we won't be using it. But yes, when the form data is created, this will be used as a key. So this is very important to provide a name to your input fields. So for this select, we have name. Uh, we have three options. The first one is empty, right? So the first one has no value. Uh, we can just simply keep it empty only. Let's not just get into the hassle of three dots. Uh, then we have two options, male and female. We have values for them. Then we have country. We have radio buttons. Both of the radio buttons will have the same name because they are, you know, a linked, right? For the same field. And the values are India and outside. Outside of India. Then we have a subscribe button of uh, input type checkbox. And we can click and unclick it. On submit, we have a button with type submit and that's it. So this is the basic form. You can easily create it. I won't go into the details of this. I think this is basic HTML stuff and you should know this. Now, the purpose of this video is how we can handle when a user is using a sign up form, clicking on submit button, how we can get a hold of all the values from the form and then maybe, you know, submit the form. So by default, if we do not provide anything uh, when a form is generally submitted, if we don't provide, so in the form, you know that, okay, there are attributes like method and action, right? action is given as post method you can provide any backend file where the form submission goes so in this case we won't do anything everything has to be tackled inside of javascript so how we can do that now the first thing would be when a user fills in all the values i will not go into the basics of validations so you can do that on your own once we're done with the basic form handling i'll inform you how we can put in validations in place and that will be a homework for you guys and you guys can do it yourself i'll give you hints Right. So what we will be doing is on the click of the submit button, we want the form to be get submitted. Right. So that is an event handler for the form. So here, if you can see, we have an on submit event handler that we can associate with this form. And let's say handle form is the function that we want to trigger when the form is submitted. So what it will be the next step, we will be creating this function handle form and we have seen this in the previous video as well if you have not seen the previous video please go check out the previous video first and also if you have not subscribed to the channel please do subscribe to the channel so here we can have this event argument this will hold uh, the entire form so in this case this form is triggering this particular event handler so this event if i do this console.log 
event dot target will give me the entire the complete element that is triggering this event. So in this case, I get the entire form uh, HTML or JSX uh, element when this form is clicked. So let's see if that's working. So if I click on submit, nothing is happening. Okay, so another important thing that we have to discuss here. So when I'm clicking on submit, what's happening is if you can see over here, the UI is getting refreshed because that's how a form works in HTML when you have a simple form that doesn't have any method or post uh, declared. So it will submit its value to its own page. So when I click on submit, it is refreshing the page and sending the values to itself. But we have to prevent this behavior. So how do we do that? We can simply use event because that is the event that is getting triggered. We'll capture that event and we'll stop it from happening. So in JavaScript, you can use event dot prevent default. Why well, I'm not getting any suggestions for this. So this is the function that we can use to stop the default behavior of that particular event. So now if I click on submit, oops, getting an error. Okay. So I misspelled this prevent default. Sorry. So now let's try once again. Yep. So now when I click on submit, the page is not getting refreshed. The form is not getting submitted because I have explicitly specified JavaScript that okay, please don't let the default behavior of this particular form submission propagate and stop it here only. So I have stopped it and then I'm, you know, doing whatever I want to do. In this case, console.log we are executing to see the target that is being submitted. So I can see, you know, entire form uh, element I'm seeing over here or everything, right? So event.target is giving me access to the entire form element, right? Now I can, I'll be obviously using this to get hold of the values as well that the form is submitting and then we can use it however we want to. Yes, like I said, you know, it, this is the most easiest way to handle forms in React.js. So this will keep, this will remove. Uh, let's create a variable for form and inside of this we'll have this event.target. So we got the hold on the form in this. Now how do we get the form data? So in JavaScript what you can do is if I create form data variable. So there is an object that we can, we can use that's over here form data that we can use with the form element and it will automatically get all the form values and store it in the form data variable. So this form data is, if you can see, provides a way to easily construct a set of key value pairs representing form fields and their values, right? So we have created a new form data object and we have provided this form to this so that, you know, internally JavaScript can uh, use all the values delivered by the form and create a new form data for us. And that's it. This form data we can utilize. We can convert it into an object. We can convert that object into a JSON. Then we can send that JSON to our backend API where we can process the form data. So let's see what will be the next step in this particular case. So what we have done up until now is we have got hold of the form element. Then we have created a form data object, which we saw that, you know, this is a good way to hold key value pairs. We have provided the form to it. Now the next step would be to create a form object or form data object in which we'll have key value pairs and that would be easier for us to, you know, access the values using the dot operator or we can convert directly into JSON as well using the json.stringify function. So you should know JavaScript before starting to learn React.js because there are a lot of things, a lot of concepts of JavaScript that I am also using directly, assuming that you know JavaScript, right? So what I'll do over here is I'll use the object. It has a function, I think form entries. Yep. Uh, so this enables us to use form data to directly create, convert it into an object. So what I'll do over here is I'll provide the form data and in this form data, so there are all the form data entries are available in this particular object over here, form data. How I can get hold of the entries by entries, I mean all the fields that are there, that this input, this input, that there is this gender, uh, radio button checkbox, all these values can be, uh, you know, we can get using the entries function, right? So now what's happening over here, if you can see this entries function returns an array of key value pair for every entry in the list, right? So in this form data, whatever values were there, we use the entries function to get key value pair out of it. And we use the form entries from entries function of the object object 
to create a basic object. If you console dot log this, you will see that we have all the data in a nice object form. And that's what we were supposed to get. So initially, if I submit it, I'll get empty name, email, gender, empty, right? Uh, if I provide all the values, so let's provide values. Let's say Abhishek, email, mail, India, subscribe. If I submit it, I get all the values. Name, Abhishek, email, this, gender, this, country, this, and subscribe on. So this, uh, again, I have used a couple of different types of input fields. that over as well, text area. Then there are different input fields. I think you can use any number of any different input fields in here. And you can handle your form this way. Using this code, it will be super easy for you to handle your form data. You're getting all the form data in this. Now, again, you can have, you know, basic validations like, you know, if form data, so object dot uh, name uh, is equal to uh, equal to empty, then you can show maybe an alert at uh, all fields are required or let's say just name name is required right similarly you can have validation for each of the fields so let's try this out let's just remove this name and try to submit it it will say name is required so we've added validation you can have a uh, regular expression based validation so over in here or whatever you want to do once you're satisfied with the values that the user has submitted then you can you know maybe call the fetch a uh, function, you know, send it to your backend in form of JSON, how you can convert it into JSON. Let's see that as well. So we have this form data object. If we have to convert it into JSON, form JSON, we can use the JSON object and the JSON object has this parts, oh sorry, JSON object has this stringify function to which we can provide any object and that is converted into a JSON. So if you see this, uh, let's just, you know, console.log both, both. So let's just console.log both. So here we are console dot, uh, we are logging the object and here we are logging the string, JSON string that we have created. Let me provide the name again. Let me clean this up, submit. So here you can see we are getting the object with name value bear, key value bears. And here we are getting a simple JSON string with name, email, uh, gender, country, everything. So all the fields of the form are automatically handled. All you have to do is get hold of the form, then create a new form data object, provide the form element to it, then use the object uh, form from entries function, uh, provide it all the entries of your form data and you get the object, that's it. So these three likes of code or this fourth one as well, we have to prevent the default behavior. These four lines and you get immediately the object with all the values of the form. Then you can, if you want to convert it into a JSON, you can do that. Or if you want to directly use them uh, using the dot operator, you can do that as well, right? So that was it for this video. There are more different ways to handle form as well, because in this case, we have not used state because we are not uh, changing anything on the user interface. This is a simple way to, you know, sort of have a form and then, you know, use the value of the form to send it to the backend to do the processing. If you want to have some state over here to change the user interface, maybe you can have, uh, you know, you want to show. So I used alert to show messages when, uh, you know, some validation failed. So you can have uh, some state over here, error, etc., and you can use that to show messages over here. If someone, a user has maybe probably, you know, entered a wrong email address or has not uh, selected any of the field, you can show that on the user interface. Also, if you want to have a form, uh, as the user is adding values, you want to display values over here, then you will have to use states, maybe, you know, on change event on every, every of the input field. So there are multiple ways to, you know, handle a form value. I'll cover more different ways in the upcoming videos, but, but this was the most easiest way. So I wanted to share this with you. Uh, I hope you are able to follow uh, the code that I've written. If you have any confusion, please post your confusions, your queries in the comment section, and I'll definitely, you know, comment on the videos please do comment you know i like reading comments but we don't receive too many comments but that's okay you know as far as you guys are learning uh if you have not subscribed to the channel please do subscribe to the youtube channel press the bell icon so that you get notified whenever i upload new videos like this video if you enjoy it and if uh, you want me to cover it specific in react.js please do let me know and i will definitely cover that this react series is going well and i'll cover a lot of more things 
uh, in React.js, all the modern stuff. So stay tuned and keep learning.